Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. Today we're going to make a steampunk design light switch, or at least we're going to attempt to make one. So stay tuned. This is really an opportunity for me to use this laser to do things that because of my essential tremors or that my hand shakes, this is going to let me continue doing things that have a lot of detail that I was starting to not feel like I could do anymore. Now I'm using the Autor Laser Master 3 and I'm really excited of how well this works. You could cut all of this stuff with a bandsaw or even a jigsaw if you want and get the same effect but for me this has really let me do things that are really would be difficult for me because of my tremors with my hand but everything is in metric and you know I'm old school I don't know metric I barely know inches so I had to go down I actually have like 12 tape measures but they're all based on inches so I went down and bought a tape measure that was actually showing the conversion of the metric tables so I've started working with that so hopefully I can build this project using metric measurements so I decided to use quarter inch thick maple uh, plywood which I picked up at the Home Depot and I got two by four foot piece and it ran me about twenty dollars but I'm gonna have tons left over to do a lot of projects or so when they sent me the laser I purchased a software that's called Lightburn. Now so far what I've found with this I really like it because you can actually design in this software let alone do all the cutting work but the software works very similar to using Adobe Illustrator so it's not too tough to use. I just had to get used to using metric numbers in it. So I started designing my basic concept. Now I know I'm going to make mistakes with this because there's several things in the way or that's kind of slowing me down on this, but that's okay. This is a learning experience for me. Basically using this and metric measurements, I'm going to start building the template that I build the entire switch around. So I'm ready to start putting on the safety glasses and start doing my cutting, but I also have to lock poor shop cat out for now while I get all this cutting done. So when I cut the handles, I realize this is the wrong design. I've got to rethink that. You know, i got to tell you, I'm starting to have doubts that I'm going to make this thing work. So, okay, back to the drawing board. This is the wrong design. I've got to rethink that and make it more in a wrench style that I can turn back and forth. Now don't get me wrong, I expect to screw up on some of this and that's why I bought a 2x4 sheet. It's plenty of material and it gives me a chance to play with this and then I've still got stuff to work with on other projects. But you know, after kind of redesigning that handle and cutting it, I think maybe this is going to work. Now I'm going to add some bushings to this. This is going to help me fill in those gaps between the gears making the handles work. Now until now the location of the hole for the handles has been pretty much a guess so we're going to have to kind of see how that works out. I'm not sure if we're going to get there or not. Mm -hmm. 
I love the look of these gears. Now I'm going to use Starbond CA glue. This stuff is fantastic and I'll put a link down below for this glue. In fact, I think they offer a 15% discount with my link. Great stuff. It works fast and you can get a lot done with this. Now it's time for some paint. So now while the gears are drying with their basic coat of paint, let's start and stain the back plate. Okay, setting that aside, let's start painting the gears to get that worn metal look. This is a water-based acrylic paint that's called Deco Art. It comes in um, these little tubs. It's almost like a paste. You can just take a little bit out, put it down on a piece of paper or a scrap surface, and just do a uh, get your finger in it, do a little rubbing, and then start rubbing on the material that you want to give it that kind of metal look. You can add additional colors. Now here I'm using an inexpensive acrylic that's like 99 cents for a little bottle of this. You can squirt that on. You also rub these to give you that blend of colors and it makes the, the wood or the surface that you're painting look like aged metal. So you're going from that black surface to a combination of colors that gives it just kind of a cool looking aged metal surface. I cut a half inch dowel that I'll be able to use through each of the gears to hold the handle. I hope that works well. A little sloppy, so I'm going to put a little tape around this to uh, thicken that up a little bit. Okay, so now I think I can put that in. That in. Silver piece. Mm -hmm. This in. Gear, and that should still pick up now on the back switch after I had stained it I came back and sprayed some of this rust-oleum chalk paint now this is of the same brand and brand of paint that I used with the black paint on the other stuff but this stuff gives you kind of a light haze that you can dust around it and kind of gives you a nice antique looking finish. Now I'm going to take some of what I call the donut holes let, that were left over from the bushing. So I'm going to use those as rivets and put those onto the back plate. Once again, using the Starbond CA glue, I'll put it all together. So it looks to me like I pretty well have this uh, ready to give it a try. Um, I put a light clear coat on it just to help protect it and give it a nice sheen. Um, one of the things I did notice though was lining up the original shield to the back. My switch holes are in the right place, but the drill holes 
are fine on one end, but on the bottom end, they are not. I'm gonna have to re-drill those, and, but if I do them on the bottom, I think we'll be okay. Now, there was a lot of process in doing this, and I didn't get it right the first time. I had to do some several different cuts. These gears started out being this shape, is what I was thinking would work, but that just wasn't gonna wasn't going to do it and took a little bit of re-engineering. And using the laser cutter though really helped me out with this and even helped with not wasting a lot of materials even though I was kind of experimenting as I was going along on this. Um, so I'm going to re-drill the two holes in the back I'll try it out and see if it fits. Okay, so I'm ready to install this. It's going to kind of tie in with my old, the uh, little sculpture I made before. So I re-drilled the two lower holes in the bottom, so hopefully that will make a difference with setting that into place and that I can align this thing properly. Too. That's going to do it. Feels pretty secure. Oh, yeah, see? That turned them off. And then to turn them on, <laughs> one off, one on. Oh, how fun. How fun is that? I'm really pleased with how this turned out. This was a lot of fun and it was an exciting project for me because I was learning to use the new laser cutter and engraver that I got and it really let me do a lot more intricate things that I can, couldn't do normally, especially with the hand trimmers that I have. So this was a neat project. Let me know what you think. Um, should I put the pattern up? Do you guys want to have a pattern of this? Or, uh, you know, let me know. I'm still kind of kicking different things around, learning a little bit as we go, but this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you staying with me and uh, check out some of these other videos. In the meantime, I'll see you soon.